everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Fiddle. I am an artist, a crafter, and a miniaturist that likes to teach others that they can be creative too. Link to scavenger hunt, patterns, and materials is listed in the description box below. And please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment. It really helps me out a lot with YouTube's algorithm. Okay, are you ready? Let's go. Today's project is this cute little pot belly stove. Originally I had made a fireplace out of cardboard and it warped and I really didn't like the way the colors look. I decided to make this stove instead. Okay, to start this project we're going to need two yogurt cups with kind of rounded edge at the bottom. Take the top rim off of one of them, then the other one you just want the bottom rounded portion of it. I was lucky enough that these yogurt cups actually had a line right there that I could follow. Next, using the excess leftover from the cup that you're just keeping the bottom part of, cut out a door. You'll want it to be small enough to fit on the flat face on the side of the stove and keep comparing it to the bigger piece so that way you have the right size and shape. And make sure while you're cutting this piece that you're keeping your curve going the right direction. We want the curved portion going side to side. When you have your door cut out, lay it against the rest of the stove and we're going to trace this line out. This is a guide for us and it'll be covered up later so it don't matter about being marker. Now grab you a piece of thick paper or cardstock and trace the door onto it. You'll need a ruler for this next part. We're going to make a square inside of the square. Using your ruler, go in about a fourth of an inch all the way around, then cut the inner square out. Save this piece of paper because we're going to use it later. What we need to do now is trace it onto our stove inside of the square that we already made. This will be the hole that we're going to cut. We had to go through the few extra steps just so we can make sure that the door was bigger than what the hole on the stove is going to be. Next you'll need some tape and make a protective square around your square that you're going to be cutting. Because this plastic is so brittle, it will crack on you if you try to attempt this without some sort of protection over it. And please be mindful of your fingers. When you've got the hole cut out, go ahead and take the tape off. We don't need it anymore. Next, you'll need a skewer. We're going to make the hinge bar, I think is what it would be called, for the door. Lay your stick along the side and put your door over top of it so that way you can really see how big the door is and how big your sticks need to be. We're also going to cut a shorter one for the handle. Next, grab your cardstock again and your ruler. Measure and cut a strip that is about a fourth of an inch wide and we'll say six inches long because we'd be splitting it in half so it'll be three inches on each side. I had a super glue explosion so there's not much footage here for this part. We need to attach two small beads to both ends of both of our sticks, the hinge and the handle. Okay, now that the disaster is over, take your strip of cardstock and wrap it around your hinge post. You really only need to go around one complete time, just far enough so that way when you go to glue, you won't get any glue on the wood and your hinge not move. Then repeat the process again for hinge part number two. Super glue is the best bet here. It won't leak out like white glue would or wood glue. Leave about an inch of excess and then cut them off evenly. Next, glue your hinges to your door. It's up to you if you want it on the inside or the outside. I put mine on the inside. If I would have thought about it then, I would have added the square that we cut from the center of the stove and attached it to the center of the door so it had like a little bit of a ledge or a lip on the inside. But I didn't think about it. It's okay. The next thing we need to do is attach the door to the stove. The super glue wasn't being very friendly that day. As I always say, if you haven't glued your fingers together yet, then you're not doing it right. Anyway, the next piece to glue on is the handle. And then it's off to painting. If you have any troubles with your paint being too thin, you can always add cornstarch and that'll make it a bit thicker and opaque. I used a metallic black, but a regular black would be just fine.
Next, I took a thin strip of cardstock and used it to wrap around the top where the two halves meet. I thought that would look better compared to the raw edges. The little white squares on the inside are little double sticky sided foam tabs. They really didn't serve a purpose in the end. I had originally put them in there because I felt like the top would slide down in too far, but it really didn't, especially after putting the paper around the edge. Next I glued the lid on, and while I was doing that, I realized that I could actually use the lid of the dip cup too as like a little shelf. I went ahead and trimmed just the slightest edge off, and then painted it black just like everything else. When the paint's dry, we can go ahead and put it together. We start with the dip cup upside down, and then glue the lid onto it upside down and then the stove on top of that. You'll have to add your glue to the little upward bumpies on the lid, not the center ring because it doesn't touch the center ring at all, just those points. If you wanted to try to use super glue, you could. But I started, I did the painting and then put the stovepipe on. Not that it makes a difference in the grand scheme of things. Anyway, back to painting. I added a coat of a bronze color to the lid and rim of the dip cup and also the door and hinge. I missed showing you how to make the inside frame right there. But I used the two templates that we had used for the, making the door itself and cut a slit corner to corner and folded the triangle pieces inside the stove and glued them. Sorry I missed that, but now we are on to the last and funnest step, I think, and that is to ash up the stove. Take your chalk pastels and shave it down. We're going to take a fluffy brush, a makeup brush would work good and another brush that we're going to use for water purposes. You don't want to use the same brush because then you'll just make a mess. But we're going to start with putting water where we think ashes would be more than likely to collect. And then after we've put the water on, we're going to go through with the fluffy brush and dust it up. I actually used cornstarch instead of white chalk because that saves on my white chalk and it turns out just as good. After you're done dusting it, you can coat it with a coat of matte clear spray so it'll secure all that ash where it's supposed to be. If you've made it this far, thank you for being here. Next tutorial will be this cute little rocking horse. Please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it helps me out a lot, and I'll see you next time.